the age-old question is, and I keep asking myself, is how do we put a dollar figure on soil health? Have you got uh, any answers to that? I do, it's priceless. So, we're here with Cy Kovacic from Clare. How's it going, mate? Yeah, not bad, mate. So? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So, um, Cy, we're standing right here. I, I want to just talk about where we're standing right now, actually. So we're in like a permanent bed system by the look of it. Can you tell me much about what's actually happened right here, where we are? These, uh, these beds have been here since 2010. I've left a few drills out for people to see. Um, standard procedure here was make the bed for cane, plant the cane, run it through to about a fourth or a fifth return. Um, and then I ended up planting soybeans into it, which was followed by a second crop of soybeans. And this is what's left here. Now, the cane behind you is planted into this bed and I intend to take it back around through to the fourth return again. So in effect, I'll have had permanent beds for somewhere near 15, 14, 15 years. So, so basically minimal tillage, I suppose, in, that, in this particular site. Yeah, and I'm... And you've had rotational, you've had two rotational crops in there? That's correct, yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah, on the journey of finding a system that works for myself, I've found that um, minimum tillage works the best. Yeah, yeah. And so, so how many years you've been here now? And there's some challenging soils around here as well, I know that for a fact. And basically I want to know how many years you've been here, when you decided to start to bring rotational crops into, into your system, and the reasons behind it sort of thing. Um, look, we've been here ever since the blocks opened up in the late 80s, uh, mid 90s. Um, we bring our delta farming practices with us and fell in a heap immediately. Mm. So we were always searching for a better way to do something. Um, well, I guess one of those downturns there, when the return was low on came, we started looking at other crops and we delved into some of the beans then and then uh, lost enthusiasm for it. But then the second time round, we had a better go at it. And we took the view that if we're going to spend money on legumes, that we'd take it through to grain. Yep. And that's the point where things really started to tick. Yeah. So the soil health benefits, obviously, over time, have you noticed? Absolutely, you absolutely. Um, like this farm is a, a better soil, so to speak. Um, but I have a farm on the outskirts, on the, one of the last farms in the district towards the west. And it is renowned as very mediocre soil. Yeah. And I wouldn't say it matches this farm now, but it's so, certain, sodicity. Uh, sodicity, alkalinity. Yeah. It's a mixed bag that place. Yeah. It's just rough country. But the improvement's been incredible, really. So how do you how do you benchmark yourself? How do you, how do you so basically you're saying from when you originally farmed here to now? you've got yield improvements or is it economics or how do you actually set your goals you know what I mean like how do you how do you know you're doing well obviously oh. money in your pockets always awesome to have raft of things I'm not, not cultivating anymore not needing to buy a new tractor every three years to keep up with the cultivation less expense the minimum till I know is less expense my yields are improving yep. my, my plant canes are actually um, hard to um it's not often i don't get a 200 ton of the hectare plant cane yeah which if you look back to say 10 years ago yeah that was impossible yeah yeah you know? so that's the norm now yeah so, so that's exactly yeah. right so that's your benchmark so we're standing here right now in front of this machine here you want to explain exactly what you're doing with this machine here in particular i notice it's been modified well look it's um probably the second tier of of the legume ideology we, we've been in the legumes long enough now and we've started branching into the 30 month fallow system and if 18 month had improvements then the 30 month is even far superior again yep. but as part of that i was looking for a grass in the system so, so to keep your rotation keep my rotation yep. of yep. grass legume grass legume yep. and this was bought for rice at the time mm -hmm. um but it does plant legumes of any description yep. plants grasses yep. so yeah and it's I suppose you it's been modified, you can't see, but out at the back there, it's on a 3 or a 3.6 metre tram line. I'm 3.6, but another client's 3 metres. Okay, so you do a bit of contract work little as well. Bit, little little bit, bit, yeah. yeah. So, 
you harvest your own crop or is that a in your family you've got your own cane harvesting business as well and well yes we're fully integrated we plant our own cane harvest our own cane plant our own legumes we don't harvest our own legume but i'm quite happy with that at the moment yep okay yeah. and irrigation wise you've got recycle pits um spray equipment i see as yeah as well. the whole hog we, we've got the underground pumps for the aquifer we've got the recycle pit to meet our requirements yeah we're fully integrated, I'd yeah. say. And so, for example, if some of these legume crops or alternative crops reduced in price, would you still have them in your system? Well, that's that's been... Because um, obviously that's part of your decision making to be able to choose what you're going to plant, where you're going to plant. Market must... And have you had trouble with markets? Let's just put it that way. Look, the last few years have been very good to us because we're in demand. There's no denying that. Price is up, excellent return. I've used these few years to keep pushing and looking for ways to grow it cheaper so that we can operate at those lower numbers, the $500. Um, and I'd hazard to say that even at a, I wouldn't say negative, but at a neutral cost recovery, like a yeah. break even, I'd still go ahead. There's still value in it. Simply yeah. because, you know, I, I think it was a fifth return at 140 odd tonne of the hectare. Yeah. So, you can't. I'm getting, I'm yeah. getting if, if for any moment I think I've lost the ability to grow cane on that piece of ground for a year, yep. I gain it across the rest of my crop. So, so it's part of your farming system. It, it is a system. Yeah. It's a yeah. system from start to finish yeah. now. And, and there's no actual recipe I'm gathering. I imagine it, things are going to change. If pigeon pea came in as, a, as an awesome you know, rotational crop, you'd probably look at that as well. We're always looking. We yeah. always look on a little scale yep. and stick with our main ones. But every year we try something a little bit different. You're obviously pretty confident yeah. in growing a crop now. Yeah. I mean, I know when you first start it's challenging, but when you... Obviously, I actually feel that it probably makes you a better cane farmer as well. Would that be a correct statement? Look, most, most of these crops are, can be somewhere between 70 and 150 days. So there's a, quite a few critical windows inside those days. And you can identify them quickly. So you go, oh, geez, I'm two days late for that. Now, the same mentality should apply to your cane, really. And if you can, you, know, you take that mentality across to your cane, you're going to grow a better cane crop too. You know? yeah. be, be proactive, be on the ball, do what's needed when it's required. Yeah, you know? yeah and I suppose you know, the age-old question is, and I keep asking myself, is how do we put a dollar figure on soil health? Have you got uh, any answers to that? I do, it's priceless. It's priceless. Yeah. It's been great talking to you, Soy. Thanks very much, mate. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.